Um, hi, uh, Katie Mack here. I have just been looking at the most recent cluster image from JWST, this amazing space telescope that's out there looking at very distant galaxies. And I have to share with you some cool stuff about this image. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have any really good way to, um, to do this uh, in terms of like to make a cool looking video. So I'm doing a little Zoom share, uh, you know, screen sharing thing. And uh, and this will just have to be sufficient. So, um, OK, so this is the image. This is on the JWST website. Uh, they're calling it the Cosmic Seahorse. And what it is, is it's a cluster image. So it's a, a deep image of a very, very small part of the sky where they were looking specifically at a cluster of galaxies to see the galaxies themselves, but also the distant galaxies behind the cluster that whose images were distorted by the gravity of the cluster. So this is a gravitational lensing image. The way that gravitational lensing works is that if there's a really massive object in the universe, it bends the space around it. And so the things behind it, the images get distorted. It's kind of like if you were looking through sort of wavy glass uh, through a window, the images would be distorted. Or if you look through like the bottom of a wine glass, um, if you look at a light through the bottom of a wine glass, the light makes these sort of arcs and curves um, because it's it's going through this, this curved glass. And gravitational lensing uh, essentially makes space itself that, that curved uh, medium. So it, it bends um, the light around massive objects. So a massive object will, will distort the space so that the light bends around it. And so in this image, you can see some of that gravitational lensing. You can see some of these like arcs. Uh, and these are giant arcs that are um, they're actually images of pretty normal galaxies that are that are behind the cluster. So the cluster is is here, this clump of, of bright white galaxies. And there are these, these arcs in this um, sort of tangential arcing <laughs> pattern um, that, uh, and these, these show, or, or these are actually images of galaxies that are behind the cluster. The images are distorted by the gravity of the cluster. Now, there's some really weird looking things in this picture, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you some stuff about this that I just learned by, by kind of reading up on this, um, on this image. So this, this image is amazing. I mean, first of all, let's just Let's just appreciate um, the beauty of this image. All these amazing galaxies all over this picture. I mean, you could stare at this for hours and and pick out all these cool looking galaxies. You know, you got these sort of spiral galaxies. You got these elliptical galaxies. So the bright white sort of fuzzy looking ones. Those are elliptical galaxies, which means that the stars are kind of all mixed up. They're generally older galaxies where the stars are mostly kind of dying. Um, then there are this, these spiral galaxies where you can see these spiral arms. And those are galaxies that are mostly going to be continuing to form stars. Um, and then you have a bunch of little smudges <laughs> where you can't, very, you can't see very well what's going on. But um, you know, they're very small or very distant uh, galaxies. And the different colors uh, here are, it's a mix of actually different colored stars, or in some cases, galaxies that are so far away that their light has been stretched out to the red part of the spectrum by the expansion of the universe. Um, so anyway, one of the cool things about JWST is that it has better resolution than like a Hubble Space Telescope. So it can see more detail. It can also see farther because it can see into the infrared part of the spectrum, which means it's looking at galaxies whose light really has been stretched very, very much. Um, by the expansion of the universe, stretched out to longer wavelengths, which mean redder colors, which at, in the in the end can get you to infrared or or even farther um, into that part of the spectrum. And so JWST can see into the infrared, can see really really distant galaxies, uh, but it also just has a lot better resolution than like Hubble, and so it can see a lot of detail. Now, this image of uh, this cluster was was chosen to, to be able to see the cluster and to be able to see the lens images of the distant galaxies. And so there was actually a previous study of this cluster done with the Hubble Space Telescope, um, where they, they were looking at it specifically to get information about how the gravitational lensing was going to look with JWST. Um, and so 
I, I found that paper. Um, so this is the paper uh, they were creating templates um, to, to figure out what was going on with this cluster. And I'm not gonna go through all this stuff in this paper because it gets pretty technical, but I will show you this, which is an image of, um, of part of the cluster where they were modeling how the distortion of space was going to affect uh, was affecting the galaxies behind it and and the the main things to look at with this image are this the red line um, that goes around the edges of this sort of clump and there's a there's a red line in here and there are a bunch of little red lines those are called are called caustics um, or, or sort of critical lines and um, these critical lines mean that essentially those are the places where where if there's a galaxy in the image that, that's getting close to those red lines, you're going to have uh, multiple images of, of that galaxy. So essentially what they've done is they've mapped out where all the mass is in this, uh, in this region. So where all the galaxies, the dark matter, everything, they're figuring out where the mass is and that's telling them where space is going to be the most distorted. And then they're looking at, um, the galaxies in the background and seeing where there are multiple images of the same galaxy because the, the light has been like uh, distorted that much. And so things that are really close to those red lines often are, are kind of doubled. And so you can see um, they've circled uh, several of these sources that are kind of on either side of those critical lines and you get kind of double images. And sometimes you get images sort of inside and outside those critical lines. Um, it's a way of, of mapping out where you expect to see uh, those multiple images as that light is distorted and comes to from different paths going through this very distorted space. So you can see the same galaxy twice or three times or you know a bunch of different times because the light is getting distorted as it's going through that massive region. And so as the, the distortion can give you multiple images of the same galaxy. And so what they've done here is they've modeled that all out and they've circled in the same colors with, and they've labeled galaxies where you get more than one image of them. And so, you know, you can see here 30.1, 30.2, 30 30.3, these are all images of the same galaxy, but they've been distorted and, and um, because the, 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 it, they're going through this very distorted space. Um, so it's, it's really a neat thing that you can do this at all, they map out where all this goes. And there's some really, really interesting things about it. Like um, the, the um, you get these, these images where you can have kind of one on either side of these critical lines and they can be kind of stretched out in this way or they could be bent around as, a, as an arc. It, it's, it, gets, it gets really complicated and really interesting, but it's very cool. So I was looking through this, uh, this lens map because I wanted to see in the, in the new image, like which of those little smudges are the same galaxy? Because that's kind of the cool thing to spot with, um, with these gravitational lensing images is which of these galaxies are you seeing twice, basically? So, um, so I, I was looking at this and I couldn't figure out how to match it up with the, um, the JWST image. Like it was kind of, because the, the resolution is different and so things look a little different. Um, but then I noticed on the JWST website, there was a, uh, a little info section about the, uh, about the JWST image. And it has like the name and the designations, where it is, which constellation it's in, coordinates. But it also mentions that the orientation of the JWST image has been rotated. And they give you a nice little like compass rose to tell you how it's been rotated. Um, and so when I compared it to the Hubble image, the Hubble image has north facing up. The JWC image has north facing down and to the left. Um, and so I, I looked at that, I was like, okay, what if I just rotate the Hubble image um, by that amount? And you can do that in like, you know, PowerPoint or Keynote, you can put in exactly the, <laughs> the rotation angle. So I rotated it by, by the correct number of degrees there. And then I uh, overlaid it on the, um, on the JWST image. And you can see uh, as I do this overlay that I, I got it to match up <laughs> where exactly where all these galaxies are. So now I can look at that, um, that, that lensing map and I can look at the JWST images that I, and I can see what's happening in the JWST image. I can see which of these galaxies are repeated and it's, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, so let me, um, 
like so let's zoom in here so so this is you can you can kind of see where the overlay is happening i'm going to put them side by side so you can see a little bit more clearly what's going on um and one of the really neat things is that you can see that this this particularly weird smudgy galaxy here that's two images of the same galaxy but, but they're crossing this critical line which is why you get that that massive distortion there but also there's a, a third image of that galaxy right here and you can see in the third image it looks like a totally ordinary spiral galaxy um, the third image is less strongly distorted it's farther from that critical line and so you can get a better idea of what that galaxy looks like if it, if we're not distorted by the lensing and then here it is uh, with that really, really strong distortion. And that's a really cool thing to be able to see, to see that, that oh, that, that, that galaxy up there, that's what we're seeing all spread out and smudged over here. And then there are, there are a couple of other ones. Um, this arc over here, this is uh, a couple of smudged together images of the same galaxy that's also appearing up here as a sort of more normal looking galaxy there. Um, and then there's this little kind of tiny smudge over here is the same as this one over here, and it's the same as this one here. And so in one of those images, and in this one, you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. Um, so you can you can kind of see what's happening there. It's it's very, very neat. And then all the other uh, all the other structures that you see are these kind of arcs. So there's like this arc over here and these ones over here. And those were um, were labeled in the uh, Hubble image. They weren't um, they weren't you know sort of uh, described as, as much. Um, so I'm just going to show you again, sort of a higher resolution. You should you should go down, go and and download the actual image and and stare at it because this is not going to be very uh, very high resolution in this video. It's a recording from Zoom and and then you know it's going to be uploaded. Like it's not going to look as good. Um, but just but just like dive into this and take a look. You know, so so I'm going to highlight again. Um, so these three are the same galaxy. You're seeing the same view of that galaxy uh, three times here. Um, two of them kind of smudged together and, and distorted, and then one less distorted, a little bit farther away from the, the bulk of the cluster. Um, and then here, this, this, these are uh, images of the same galaxy. Oh, and then there's another one I forgot to circle up here. Um, so these are these are all the same galaxy, and, and you know different sort of stretchings and distortions of that. And then over here are these are all the same galaxy as well, and so you get different views of that as it's going through this very very distorted space. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean just I don't know, just just it's just so cool <laughs> to see that and to know uh, that like what those galaxies are doing and where they are. And, and you know, if you look through the JWST image, there's so many other cool things to see, other uh, giant arcs. Um, around, uh, you know, it, where there are other massive objects and you're getting these distortions, um, not just just the main central part of the cluster, but other, um, other really large uh, galaxies or, or regions of the cluster. Now, a couple of things. Uh, one thing to note is that a lot of the gravitational lensing, a lot of the mass distortion here is happening not from the galaxies themselves, but from the dark matter that's part of that cluster. Now, dark matter is some kind of invisible stuff. We don't know what it is. We're pretty sure it's real because we see how it distorts, uh, it distorts the gravity of things. It, it you know, creates more of this gravitational lensing and you see it can see how it moves stars around and things like that. So we're pretty sure that dark matter is real. Um, and one of the reasons we're pretty sure about it is because we see its impact in things like gravitational lensing. If it were just the galaxies themselves, just the light that we can see, you know, the stars producing the light that we can see, it wouldn't be enough uh, mass to create all that distortion. So, so the nice thing about gravitational lensing is that it happens whether the massive object is visible or not. Whatever the massive object is, it's creating a distortion in space and uh, therefore a distortion in the light from these uh, objects. Um, another thing, if you're wondering how do they know which of these galaxies match up, um, one is by kind of, you know, if they if they do have a kind of good map of uh, or good sort of model of where the mass is, they can sort of figure out where things should be. But also they can take spectra of each of these galaxies so they can um, examine the, the, the light from each of these galaxies and exactly where the light is being um, altered by the uh, the chemicals in the galaxy and each galaxy will have a kind of very specific spectrum of light so it'll be a certain amount of of light um, at different wavelengths 
uh, emitted because of the different mixes of stars that are in these galaxies. And then also it, it's, the spectrum is altered by the, um, the redshift effect. So if the galaxy is moving away from us very, very quickly because it's far, really far away and therefore the universe is expanding a lot between here and there, the light will be, the whole spectrum will be redshifted. So you'll, you'll see a shift in the, in the spectral lines. Anyway, the, by looking at the, the details of the light, you can, you can get like a fingerprint of each galaxy and you can map up, match up the fingerprints of, of those galaxies um, and confirm that they are the same galaxy by, by confirming that. So if you take spectra of all of these <laughs> the galaxies in these, uh, in these images, you can figure out which ones uh, match. Um, so that's that's one way to do it. You may, they may or may not have had really detailed spectra and may have been sort of very fuzzy spectra, but anyway, they were able to tell between the expectations from the, the mapping and also from the spectra which of these galaxies match up. Um, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll stop there. Um, I'll just, uh, uh, yeah, I'll just kind of leave you with uh, this image. Please do go download it. It is really cool to see. You can find it on the ESA website, um, or, or I think it must be on the, the NASA website as well, but look for the JWST um, cosmic seahorse image um, and just, you know, just kind of bathe in the beauty of this thing. Um, but it's, it's I've, I just think it's so cool that, that we know what's going on with the distortion of these images from the gravity of this of these clusters of galaxies and, and that we're able to kind of bring together the data from Hubble as well as, as this new JWST data and, and really see the physics of bending space, uh, distorting the images of these very, very distant galaxies. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Um, I hope it's interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.